Hey everybody, it's Tanya. Welcome to my channel. If we haven't met before, I am a light code activator, a crystal whisperer, and a channeler of spirit. And a lot of the channeling and messages that I bring forward now are coming through artwork. This particular piece is a little different than I've normally been doing, and I wanted to share her and some of the process as I talk about something that somebody had asked me on my blog and I talked about on a live feed, and that was... Why is it that you're doing what you're doing? What are your beliefs around spirituality and star seeds? And how exactly are you doing the channeling work? So I'm going to share a bit about that process. And it's a bit longer video than normal. So please feel free to skip through to whatever part you feel the best. And sit back, relax, and enjoy. So this little star being has evolved over the last mm, six months, I'd say. And it started out as a background, many of which I do for a lot of other paintings, a circular background, and then just, I was like, I think I need to create a face out of her. And so that's what I was working on and trying to get her, um, let her personality come out as it did. And, and I love these stars. And I have to say they were in, influenced by a painting that somebody did for me ages ago. Uh, it was one that I, had commissioned through a reading and I really enjoyed it. And I thought it would be sort of a neat idea to play with. And I think she might need some pink in her hair and stuff. So that's what I'm gonna do. So um, if there's no questions, what I'm gonna do is just talk about the process a little bit and why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I've worked as a healer and trained as a professional homeopath and did energy healing for a while and really loved it. And part of that process was, you know, getting connected to spirit. I've always been connected to spirit and nature and elementals, um, which are the spirits of nature. I'm just going to put a little pink in her mouth here. And... Part of that process was getting very relaxed and calm and ready to work with spirit. And as I did that more and more, I started to find that I was getting more connected and then I was getting more messages that were kind of the information that other people needed to hear. And so I got the little nod that it was time to share that information out into the world. And so that's part of how this started, was through doing the channeling and then letting it come forward. And as I did that more and more, um, and I work already with a large group of spirit, so it was nothing new, but it was, it was fascinating to see it evolve. And as it did... Um, I would get more and more groups that came in. So I started working with nature spirits. Then I was working with the angelics, who are part of my natural circle anyway, who I love. There, she's looking nice and rosy now, hey? And um, there was just so many groups. And then what was coming forward was a lot of the energies of the star seeds or the galactics. And those are groups of different higher dimensional beings. Um, as angelics are, the angels are, they're different groups. So you can think of it like different ethnic groups that we would have on earth. There's different spiritual groups that we have around us and they're all here for different reasons. And many people really identify with them and feel that they themselves are um, what you would call a star seed. And the star seeds are people here to work with others and the earth and her animals at this time and bring forward the healing, the messages, the connection that we all need with each other. And I was getting a lot of messages for these people and I thought, well, that's pretty cool. Um, need to be sharing that. And so I was sharing it through healing work and then through meditations and whatnot. And then it decided that it was going to connect back to my art. 
And I used to do photo representational type of paintings in acrylic. And so I would see a photo and I could replicate that. And that was how I was used to doing art. And then I quit for a very long time and started to do healing. I was actually trained as an artist for many years. And it was very interesting to see, like I've always been creative. Creativity always is in my life. And so it was fascinating to see how it was evolving and going into different places. And I was really enjoying that. And then seeing it come back into the art again was really spectacular because it was so different from how I had been working. I had always been, you know, it was very clean, precise. Like, let me show you some of my brush. That's a quadruple zero brush. So it's got like maybe five hairs in it, maybe. Um, so that's the level of precision that I was doing. And um, I still love that. I still do pointillism uh, drawings and whatnot. But then I decided I wanted to try something totally different. And so that's where the watercolor came from. And watercolor is totally the opposite because you cannot control it. It's going to go where it wants. The colors are going to blend. Sometimes you're going to get the broccoli effect, which I love. Sometimes you get the gradations and the granulation of the paint where the paint separates. I, I love that as well. And it's all just such a magical experience that I just loved it. And so it was totally unpredictable. It took a long time to get used to it. And the more I got used to it and let go, the more I was creating these pieces that were just pure energy. And I realized that it was some of the star seeds and the galactics coming through and wanting to, you know, drop their energy down and have that known for some of the people because what it's doing is actually anchoring their energy, their signature um, into the earth. And so... This is what is called anchoring light codes. You might have heard of this term because it's, it's getting to be more prevalent now compared to where it was before. And in the past, people would be like, light codes? What the heck is that all about? And it really, it's just bringing information from our solar system, from some of the galactic energies, from your astral dreams. You know, it's just bringing that energy down into the third dimension meaning that you're bringing it into the physical, the experience that we're having in our physical life. And that can be expressed in so many ways. And if you've watched my channel before, you've probably heard me talk about this, but there's a variety of things, you know, like um, anything that's creative. So creative writing or dancing, or if you write poetry, or if you are doing art or singing, anything, moving your body, moving your hands. And so all of that is bringing that energy that you are innately connected to into our third dimensional experience. And what that does is it helps to bring awareness to those around us and shift the consciousness on the planet. And that is what people are calling the ascension and waking up is that you understand that you have more available to you than you thought. So there are more choices available to you than you thought. You are more connected than you thought. You are an energetic being with abilities that you didn't even realize, but that are innate in you as a spiritual being. And so that is part of what all of this work is. And all of us are doing it just in our own way. And so my way happens to be at this point, because I've done it in other ways, but at this point it is through these paintings. And so it's bringing the energy of the different groups through me, through channeled messages, and then into the paintings. So this particular one, is not particularly a channeled starseed painting, but it is more just the energy of everything that's sort of been swirling around with me for a little while. And I'm just gonna give her a little shadow in here. And I don't know, it's interesting. This is unlike anything I've ever done. I rarely do anything that's kind of feminine and cutesy pie like this one, but she's cute, hey? And um, quite a few people have actually been jiving with this, so I thought I would work on her today just so you can get a little feel for her energy. Don't know what I just did to her nose there. So somebody had asked, why is it that you're doing this work in the first place? And 
It's a hard question to answer because it's not like I set out to be a channeler of spirit. <laughs> I mean, I've done many things. I'm one of those people, like you probably are, anybody that's watching this is going to be sensitive and multifaceted. And, you know, so I have like, what, three, four professional designations. I'm not using any of them at the moment. And that's okay. Um, perhaps later, you know, five years of training to be a homeopath and I'm not doing it at the moment. But that's okay. It might come later and it might... I'm actually feeling it's going to probably come back later and be mixed with other work. But anyway, I digress. I'm very good at the digressions. <laughs> so... This work that's coming forward at this time is really needed. And I think for anybody that identifies as a spiritual being or a spiritual seeker, or somebody that is working with the energies at the moment around you, you're going to feel a pull. You're going to feel like, yeah, it's time. I need to be doing the work that I have incarnated here to do. How does that happen? And for those of you that are just waking up or just starting your spiritual journey, welcome, welcome. It's a very exciting time. Lots to play with, lots to explore. And don't freak out if you don't know exactly what you're supposed to be doing right now. It's okay. It's going to come to you and it's, it's inside of you. And I know when you first start and you hear someone say, all the answers are inside. You're like, come on, come on. But it's true. You will find that more and more. Uh, part of the journey really is learning how to trust yourself and to trust your intuition. And as you start to do that, you will really find that you know what it, what it is that you want to do. But to help you on your way, and something that the groups that I channel often will go back to this, is you follow the things that give you light that give you happiness? Where is it in your life that you keep going back? For me, it's art. I keep going back to the art again and again throughout my entire life. And whether that was, you know, working with plants and being creative and doing that, if it was, oh gosh, I can't even tell you how many things I've played with and experimented with art-wise. And that's part of the fun is the experimenting getting into it and trying different things because this life is really about experimenting and having fun and especially um, the last couple of years you know many of you have gone back in within and some of you especially those of you who are extroverted probably had a really challenging time with being at home for people like me <laughs> not much difference but I really loved it because I'm, I'm connected to a lot of the energy of other people. And so I was feeling it. I mean, it wasn't easy. There was a lot of fearful days. There was a lot of days where there was grieving. But it did give us, as a group of people on the earth, something really spectacular. And that was understanding that we are all going through a similar experience. And having that time to go within and really connect back to ourselves. Like, what is it that's important to me in my life? Is it my family, my career? Is it my animals? Is it the, um, do I like being in nature? Do I like being around people? Do I want to do, um, do I want to work as a scientist? You know, like whatever it was that came forward for you, it probably got really amplified over that time period. And when we speak of going within, that is really what it's about, is finding within you what keeps pulling you back. What is that thing that you keep wanting to do, that you keep going back to? Like, you know, People love to give the black and white examples like the accountant and the artist, but it might be the other way. Maybe you're an artist and you, you really just want to keep doing your books. <laughs> and the more you're doing your books, the more exciting it is and the happier you are. Well, then follow that. You know, we're in a place now where everything is changing. It will be continuing to change. The energies are here to help us as a group to change and to shift and to grow so why not play with it a little bit why not explore and see what the heck is it that makes me feel good where do i want to go what do i want to be doing and so that's part of what i do is bringing the energies of different beings that are around the earth at this time who are bringing these messages to you, who are reminding you 
that you are more than just your physical body, that you are a spiritual being hanging out down here in the third dimension, playing a little bit, exploring, having different experiences, and giving you a little bit of love and support. That's really what they're all about. And I feel very honored to be part of that process. And so we work together in tandem. What is the actual process? Well, generally what happens is I will work with a different group for a short period of time. And short period could be anywhere from a week to six weeks. And I'll do a few meditations where I just get very still and then I allow their energy to blend with mine and then it creates a channeled message. Now at first I was doing the channeled messages like meditations. They were very long. You can see them on my YouTube channel. And if you're there now, just take a look in the playlists under the channeled messages section. And you'll see that there's quite a few of them, uh, including Archangel Raphael, who I love to channel. His energy is wonderful. And Archangel Michael. And there these beautiful meditative messages and as I'm speaking it's a blended voice between me and whomever is coming through and some of the messages are incredible sometimes I feel like I'm not even present for it I don't even remember what I said until afterwards and it's not like trans channeling where people actually let that energy come in and take over their body so that they're speaking through the single voice of whatever energy they're working with for me, it is, it's a, how would we say? It's like a co-creation. We're working together. And if it's something you're feeling aligned with, uh, one thing I really want to share is the importance of being grounded and the importance of working with your spirit team so that you are always connected and very aware of who and what energy you are allowing into your energy field. So I'm very clear about the way that I do it, and I don't mind to share it because it's no big secret, and maybe it'll be helpful for you. So what I do is I meditate. I call in my group um, that I work with. I, I work with a lot of different groups, but within that, I then make uh, I have a very small inner circle, and they're always present. And I ask for their assistance uh, to bring in whomever. And it's like an invitation. And so what I do is I envision a, a room I create it initially white so that it is empty of any energies and emotions or preconceptions or thoughts in that way. And then I invite a particular group or sometimes it'll just be a request. And so I'll create this space and then I start to fill it with things that I love and things that bring me happiness. So for me, it's color and beautiful hardwood floors and white walls with oak beams and a bunch of bright colored pillows and stuff. And then I always work with Archangel Michael. He's my doorkeeper. So he's making sure that only the energies that are going to bring messages of support and love are coming through. Now, I used to say for the highest good, I don't say that anymore because that is variant for everybody. So I'm, I'm really just specific about, you know, Whatever is going to bring the most support and love for those who actually need to hear it, that's what's coming through. And so that might be somebody, for instance, I just was working with the Lyrans. And these are a group of beings who, um, their higher dimensional frequency. And please know that when I speak about frequencies high and low, it doesn't mean that it's better or worse. It just means they're vibrating at a different rate. So I always love the analogy of a hummingbird. So if you see a hummingbird stopped, he's like this, right? But if you see him flying, you see this, right? So you see my fingers, but they're not actually stopped. Like you can kind of see it, but not really. And so that's what the other dimensions are like. They're just higher frequency, vibrating at a different rate. If you're a Star Trek fan, old school, there's actually an episode where they go into a higher frequency and vibrate at a rate that nobody can hear them and they just sound like little flies. <laughs> I highly recommend it. It's kind of cheesy, but it's fun. Uh, I wonder if I could, maybe I'll link it. I'll see if I can find it on YouTube. Somebody probably put it out there somewhere. Anyway, I digress. Um, 
so yeah, so I'm working with higher dimensional frequency beings, and as they come through, they have really interesting things to say. And so we speak in a blended voice, which means it's my voice. Sometimes it's my, uh, what would I say? Not my thoughts, but it's more some of the things I believe or I have spoken about before. And so concepts, this is the word I'm looking for, my concepts of experience on earth, because they're not always, sometimes they're not from earth, right? So I'm speaking with beings that haven't been to earth, and for them it's hard to understand what it's like to be in density, what it's like to be on a plane of existence where we have time, because time is really just a construct here in the third dimension where we are feeling like we don't have time. But for any of you who have ever played and found something that you love to do, you notice how your time disappears? So you could be, you know, working on a painting, for instance, and um, all of a sudden it's like three hours have gone by. Where did the time go? Versus something you really don't like, let's say, oh, what's something people don't like? You're shoveling the snow, <laughs> and it feels like it takes hours, but you've been out there for five minutes, right? So that is sort of a way to experience the interesting time construct that we have. All right, how's she looking? So there we go. All right, so a little bit more about what I'm doing is that I am in the white room. I have my friends or the groups that come forward and that blended energy, I allow it to speak through me. And as it does, um, I will audio record what they have to say. I don't know if you can tell that I'm painting a big star here. I'm trying to make it a little more pronounced. There we go. If you're somebody who's an artist or a painter, comment below and let me know. I'm always curious to see what you guys are up to and what you're working on. There, that looks pretty neat. So, <clears throat> I was trying to think about what I was talking about. Oh yeah, so we do this work together and then I have these great conversations and I tape them and then uh, sometimes I will play them back and allow the energy of what they are saying to come through into the paintings. And as I do that, I end up with these paintings that have, again, the light codes. So it is the energy of the groups or group or being that I've been working with that comes through me into the painting. And so the energy, for instance, um, what was I doing yesterday? I was working with one of the Syrian paintings and it had some really interesting codes. And the Syrians are really aligned with learning how to accept and love themselves and respect themselves. And in doing so, they're creating an example for those around them. And so that's part of their mission here on earth, those that identify as Syrian, is that they're here to basically allow others to see them as an example. A quiet example, meaning that you're not out intentionally teaching people, but your energy is doing that. And so you're giving a space to those who might not feel um, that they were safe to do it. And so they see that you're doing it and they're like, oh, well, if so-and-so is able to be themselves, is able to talk about the things that are important to them, is talking about being connected to light beings and things not of the earth, and maybe it's okay for me to do so. And so that's really part of what their message is about. And so the energy of that particular message was coming through into the codes as I was painting. And so those energies are in the painting, which means it is, it's like a magnet for people who need that in their lives. And so they would see that work, that painting, and go, oh my gosh, this is really making me feel something. I don't know what, but on some level, I'm starting to feel a connection and I want to do some work with that. What is it that I can be working on? What is it that I need to be aware of in my current day to day? I'm just going to give that a little spritz, 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 spritz. That just activates the paint and because these are, um, they have a lot of binder in them, this just allows the pigment to come up. Um, you get a nice deep pigmented color when you just allow the water to do that. So I'm just going to put those off to the side and let those go.
go get a little depth of color. She's looking a little pastel-y, I think. So she's got probably a little bit more work to do on there. Let's see, I think I'm gonna put some gold in her hair. A little bit of gold. So yeah, if you have any questions about anything that I'm talking about, let me know. Always wonderful to hear from people that are watching. Let me know why you're watching, if you just found this by mistake, or if you're enjoying the painting process, or perhaps the messages of spirituality, or how to channel, or, you know, what is it that is um, pulling you here today? Just out of curiosity, just pop it in the comments on the replay and let me know. So I am, at the moment, just making a bit of a darker gold, just to get a little bit of depth in the shadows in her hair here. So I'm trying to let some of these stars that are in the background come up, give her some highlights. Because every girl likes a highlight, doesn't she? Got to have some highlights in your hair. Do -do -do. So what else could I share? I guess so that's kind of it really, is that um, being very mindful of your boundaries and being specific about the type of energy that you are willing to work with if you are going to try channeling. It's very important because your energy is sacred and that is a lesson that took me almost a lifetime to learn. I'm in my mid-50s now. Cha-cha! Can't believe it. Still look and act like I'm 15. <laughs> Just kidding. Act like it though, that's for sure. <laughs> but it's... um. It's quite a journey, yeah, and it took me a long time. I am someone who's suffered with chronic illness my whole life. I've always, well, not always, but for the most of my adult life, had um, these bouts of exhaustion and no idea why. And a lot of it was because I was giving my energy away to other people. And anybody that's an empath and a sensitive, you know exactly what I'm talking about, how that goes down, you know, we just allow our energy because we're nurturers right we want to help people and we allow that energy to come into our being so you're taking people's pain away you're a nurturer you're a healer and you're taking people's pain away but you're forgetting that if you're not taking care of yourself then you're just gonna burn out and so this is something that was a challenge for me for years way before the concept of self-care was even known people would never even talk about that sort of thing and um you know, I have spent, without an exaggeration, many years actually lying on the floor because I didn't have the energy to get up. So I made the floor into my studio and my workspace and, you know, just went with it. But I finally said, I've had enough of this ridiculousness. And if I'm going to be doing the work that I incarnated here to be doing, you know, on Earth and in the astrals, then I really need to learn how to respect myself and say, hey, I have some boundaries around how this is going to go down. And that, that took a lot of work, and I'm very proud of myself for doing that. And I know there's a lot of you out there that are working on that right now. You will get there, trust me. You will, you will. It sometimes doesn't seem like it's ever going to happen, but it, it will happen. It's just a matter of learning to trust yourself and trusting your ability to take care of yourself. And when you know that what you're doing ultimately is going to help other people, if that's the thing that really gives you joy, then how are you going to continue to do that if you're burnt out? So you really need to be mindful of yourself and take care of yourself in whatever way that is, however that works for you. I love how her eyes are turning out. So be sure that you are doing that. It's really important. And how pretty her eyes turned out, eh? Love that. There we go. So that you can see her up close. And see some of the layers that have been going into this work. And some of the sparkle too. That is one of the things I really enjoy about this work is this beautiful shimmery paint. Yeah, she's turning up pretty good, hey? 
I'm really pleased with how this painting has been going. And um, I guess I should wrap it up. This is getting quite long. I intended this to be a five minute video and I, I think it's half an hour already. <laughs> that happens. It happens. I'm just gonna play with her eyes just a little bit. So that's part of what I do and why I do it. And I hope you enjoyed that today. I, I really love that you guys have been here with me. It's going to be um, almost 11 months coming up. Can you believe it? I think I started last, end of last February is when I started my YouTube channel. And I really want to say thank you for hanging out with me. This, this journey has been really fun and I've been enjoying so much getting to know you guys. I'm really looking forward to getting enough. If you haven't subscribed, please do, because I would really love you to be here and hang out in the community. And I really want to get the enough subscribers so I can start the community page, because that, I think, is where the power of us as a group really comes in when we are able to get into sharing what's happening with us, seeing the similar circumstances, sharing our experiences, and being there to support each other. You know, I think that's, that's part of what many who are in the spiritual world right now are saying. You know, we really are moving back to a time of interconnection and community. And if you're someone who is like me, I have a bit of a hermetic existence, which I love. But um, also I know the value of having to connect with others, whether that's online or in person. And it really makes a huge difference to your health as a being and to your mental health as a human. So, uh, yeah, subscribe. Shameless self-promotion, but not really. I, re I really do love you guys and I want you to come and hang out here. Anyway, I think um, I'm going to continue to work on her a little bit. If you are enjoying this type of content that's a little more personal and me talking about my story, let me know. Um, I'll do more videos. If you like me just to do the more of this channeled starseed stuff, that's cool too. I love your feedback. I love to hear from you guys. And I hope you have a wonderful and blessed season of joy and happiness and can't wait to get into the new year and see what crazy exciting stuff comes up because goodness knows I think we're going to have some more playtime down here in the 3D and it's a good way to view it you know if you're finding things challenging or tough remember we're just here having a fun experience and how lucky are we that we get to come and play that's how I'm looking at it anyway well there we go a bit of a departure from my usual type of video I'll say goodbye for now, and hey, if you enjoyed this, please do comment below, share, subscribe, put on that notification bell. I do a video every Sunday at 5 p.m. PST, at least that's my goal, and I look forward to seeing you guys uh, in the new year. I think it's going to be a great and fun, supportive time, and we really need each other these days, so please do connect in, and lots of love to you. All right, we'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.